YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this, we've got something new and exciting. The RV8 by Flex Innovations. Yes, you've asked for it for years and thankfully one of our subscribers decided to order one and ship it to us without our permission, which was awesome. But we're gonna review it right now. And special thanks, Rob, you know who you are. Oh, real quick, before we start, we are flying this on a 6S 100, excuse me, 100C 1300 milliamp. It can go up to 1800. It does CG out fine with that in both the sport and the other method aerobatic. And then I was planning on using this if I wanna use the night lights because you have to use the 3S pack, they say. We don't understand why this just happens to have the Hextronx balance lead, which is what you plug into it. I don't know why you can't use the 6S plug because we happen to have a voltage alarm plugged in. Four minute timer set, all sorts of crazy features built in through the Aura 8 flight controller. As you can see, switching between the modes, everything is mixed. You set up a standard flight, a standard type of wing, and you're ready to rock and roll. And it is very cool to be able to do that. So here we go, throttle cuts off, 6S flight performance. We're expecting a lot from this thing. Here we go. Oh my goodness, that thing is solid. Cool. Okay, so the flaps are off. I'm at like 20% throttle, folks. Little bit of trim on the nose. See how it's kind of leaning forward? Well, let's just do this instead. Holy cow, that thing is like, it's like 3D crazy. Oh, and by the way, I am in, I am in the aerobatic, the acrobatic crazy mode. I'm gonna go to the regular stabilized mode. Probably should have done that for takeoff. Let's see how this goes. This would be more like flying a normal plane. And I'm at like 20% throttle, folks. Take off flaps now. Look at how solid that thing is, folks. It is really solid. Okay, I'm at like 15, 20% throttle. Okay, here's 100%. That's in the, that's in the uh, standard flight mode, okay? There are no dual rates or expos set up in my controller. I am gonna try to get a little bit more clicks to trim on the elevator. Okay, there we go. You can see it starting to favor up. Okay, there, now we're level. Let's jank it. Now, remember, I'm not in I'm not in the aerobatic mode. Let's just show you an inside out loop and switch to aerobatic mode. You ready? Here's the aerobatic. Holy cow. It is beeping, but we're on 6S folks. So I'm just gonna give it a minute to recover. Now I must admit, 1300 milliamp hours seemed a little, little to me, but that's what we're doing. Okay, so full landing flaps here. Now this is full landing flaps in aerobatic mode or acrobatic mode or whatever you want to call it. That's about 60% throttle, almost did a prop hang at 60. Here's 65, 70. Yeah, you can prop hang it pretty easy. It's actually really easy to prop hang. And then all you got to do is just get it flying again. That is really cool. Okay, let's go up here. Lots of rudder, holy cow. When you add that rudder in, it's just a whole nother plane. Camera crew is probably working her tail off to get everything to focus. I do notice that it wants to nose down a little bit. So my guess is we could go back a little bit with the battery and we'd experience that about 50% pass there. We'd be able to go back with the battery just a little bit and that would help us to wake up the elevator even more. Not that it needs it. That's what I mean. Not that it needs it. Now I can see guys, if you are a new pilot, you're like, you know, that looks easy to fly, Brian. It is very weirdly not hard to fly. And yet it's so capable. Now I say not hard to fly. I would not want my camera crew to fly this. No. My son would probably fly it fine, but he wouldn't be doing the crazy stuff. Also, I must say, I'm disappointed you have to use such a small battery in this plane, but I'm not disappointed in the build. We did have some trouble because it was so slick and the canopy is a little bit thin. 
So if you want to do FPV, it's probably going to look bad through the camera just because the nature of the thinner plastic, you might have to do a new canopy that's got a little bit more oomph to it. In terms of looks and beauty, the foam is a little bit on the cartoony style. It kind of reminds me of the E-Flight look. You got plenty of power to do things you want to do, but it's kind of like, I feel like it's just weird. It reminds me of flying the RV7 from E-Flight, but it does a better job of it. Um, it's more aerobatic in its characteristics and you can slow it down a little bit better. Like, let's show you some slow flight performance. We're gonna go out of the aerobatic mode, just into the normal flight mode. Let's do an inside pass here, into the shade. That's pretty much out of throttle there. We're just gonna bring it in here in front of the house for a different angle and just show you, you can really, you can get in there, but it will bite you, so you gotta be careful. It will tip over, and I'm gonna show you a stall here. You've already seen it a couple of times. Okay, so just flying along, full landing flaps, dropping the throttle until we experience a stall. There it is. So it does a pretty nice job of just nosing down for a stall. Okay, take off flaps now. Let's do the same stall configuration. Oh, I heard a bird chirping and I thought it was my voltage alarm. Okay, now let's try stalling again. Just a little bit of upward. Okay, back on the stick, back on the stick. There it goes, drops out from under you. So it's a really, it's a predictable stall, but it's not hard to play with. It's not hard to work. That's about 60% throttle now. I'd like to fly this thing on like a 4S 2200 and see if you have enough juice to get by. And I feel like the elevator is a little bit, I'd like to have just a bit more elevator for the non 3D performance time. It's, it's like a sport flyer. It flies a lot like the other general aviation planes that we have reviewed. I don't know if the RV-8 is a real true to scale replica but it is definitely fun. If you guys want a 3D plane, it's, it's, it's one of the best 3D planes we've had. And the Aura is really cool. It is cool to be able to go up there and do this out of the 3D mode, but I don't like having the absence of elevator authority in a move like that. It just makes me nervous, right? I can do it, but it's a little disconcerting because you don't feel like you're gonna have enough to get out of it. So if you know you're gonna be doing upside down Craziness, just go into aerobatic mode. It's very soft sticks in the middle. Let's see if we can do a touch and go here. This is in aerobatic mode. Oh, tires aren't too bad. They're kind of like pseudo soft tires. It's just, a, it just does some weird things that you wouldn't expect it. And the flight controller is good at catching your mistakes. You can see when the flight controller takes over and corrects for my mistakes because you would expect it to tumble more and it just stops like that. It gets the thing flying straight quick, which is amazing. It really does help. It builds your confidence if you're trying to do 3D stuff that you might not normally understand how to do or want to take the risk doing. I also feel like the elevator is still like crazy touchy. And yes, that is beeping still. We have three minutes and 13. Holy crap, we're past our timer we're by that about far? eight minutes in. Holy cow. Okay, well, we should probably land. Okay, we're into our regular flight mode and we have full landing flaps deployed. Let's see if we can grease it. Oh yeah. Wow. That was like super easy to land, folks. Now, let's talk about this for a minute. First of all, shortcomings. A. I don't like the battery size choice. 6S is totally fine, but I wish that we could plop like a 6S 2200 or something that's gonna be bigger. Um, although there's not very many planes that even fly on 6S 2200. You're gonna get more into drone batteries like what we have here, mm -hmm. okay? Now, let's see what we killed our battery down to. Also, we haven't even talked about it yet in this part of the video because it's so bright, you're not gonna be able to see it, but you can plug another little 3S battery into there and actually run, by the way, the throttle cuts on and tested. See this canopy? That's another shortcoming, but it's not a big problem. It just keeps the weight down. It looks good. That's where we have our battery. We did our little shelf liner like normal. <clears throat> so we're at 3.7, 21.6. We're at 3.68, 3.66. 
3.64, why is this thing alarming? I must have had this set to 3.8 because I was flying EDF jet with it last time. Maybe so. That's when I run good. a prop driven plane, um, I will generally run this down to as low as like 3.3. Because on a 6S plane, you have so much surplus of power that you can really drain that battery and you can get back and have enough power to get in for a landing. So you just don't want to ever reset the flight controller in flight because you can actually take some time to do that. Now, <clears throat> I was super, super, super impressed with this Aura. It was really easy to set up. Me and the camera crew were super nervous about having problems with it and having to hook it up to the computer and do a bunch of crap mm -hmm. that was going to make it hard. And we used a little satellite receiver. You didn't even mention that yet. That's right. It's tucked in here, right? Mm -hmm. Right there. So we'll show that in the Unbox Build Radio setup. And I'll try this. It's probably not going to work, but I'm going to take this little battery. And if you want to do night flying, this is our voltage alarm that we plug in the balance lead. I'm going to take this. You can actually still use that in your balance lead. And then this runs on 3S. Now, I don't know if they just want you to test it on 3S, but once you plug this in, see, you can't even tell they're on. Okay, go up. Can we go up to the shade? <clears throat> I don't think you're going to be able to see it. I don't think you're going to be able to see it. But I mean, at night, you're going to see it. And we do show that in the Unbox Build Radio mm -hmm. setup. But once you get this thing back here, yeah, it doesn't even look like oh. it's on. Is it on? I can't tell. I don't think it's on, guys. So when you plug in your 3S pack, this is supposed to change the condition there. But I noticed that you can actually plug this into one of your channels and you can control on off with that. And uh, for that reason, we might actually have the thing turned off. So what I'll do is we'll pause and try that real quick. Okay, so we're just gonna pop a new battery in here. And what that's gonna do for us is just show you the whole process. Now also I have XT60s on the ends of these batteries, but it does come equipped with an EC three okay so ec3 is my least favorite type of battery connector <laughs> but it's it's the best one if you're using smart batteries the trouble is i don't even know if they sell a smart battery in the size class so then you would plug in the plane now i've got my throttle cut on i'm just gonna plug this in whoops why the heck do i have oh i had the adapter on there from having charged it so i'm gonna plug this one in sorry about that folks And you hear the normal startup procedure, checking the throttle cut. It is tested and good. Now I'm gonna basically move the flaps up. Now, what do we have plugged in here? We have flap right, okay. <clears throat> so let's just go to flap right. That one's easy enough to get to. And with flap right unplugged, we can go ahead and plug in our lights just to, just to see if we get them to turn on. So now deploying the flaps undeploying the flaps, uh, going to 3D mode, moving the ailerons, and I don't see it turning on. I don't know what we're doing wrong, unless this battery just happens to be dead right now, which would be somewhat embarrassing. You know what, we're gonna throw caution to the wind. We're gonna just take one for the team like we normally try to do at least once or twice in each video. And I am going to, <clears throat> that light just went out, what the heck? I confused the heck out of the plane. Let's unplug, replug. There it goes. That's probably just a, a matter of unplugging and replugging into the flight controller. <clears throat> Let's see what happens when we plug in 6S. Now, I don't want to toast the lights. Yeah, I know. Because if we toast the lights, we're screwed. Yeah. But I also don't understand why that's not turning on. Because we were supposed to go on like a gear switch. You know what? S8 is actually supposed to be for floats. So we can do that. And the float servo should be attached to the rudder. So let's see what happens. All the way. Oh, I unplugged it too. So folks, if you know what we're doing wrong on that, let us know in the comments down below. <clears throat> this, this is the Hextronics balance lead. So this would be the side that you plug it into. Did I plug it in the wrong side? I think so. It oh my goodness, that's embarrassing. Okay, now look, rudder. There you go. Off. Okay, so watch, watch. Rudder turns it on, <clears throat> rudder turns it off. Rudder turns it on. Now that's just because we're plugged into the rudder condition. So I'm gonna turn it on and then I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it and then it'll stay in the on condition, go. okay? So my apologies, folks. That was a really embarrassing mistake. 
uh, but all you have to do is just run that on this small battery pack. And we did notice the flicker. We noticed that while we were doing our unbox. So not sure what that is all about. It'd be very devastating if you were flying and that happened, especially in a night flight. So I think it would be smart to land that in your receiver or just put it on a channel that, you know, is going to stay on. But honestly, I don't know what channel that would be. So to be perfectly frank, uh, that being said, really overall great build quality. Some of the cosmetic colors are not like super great for being an unpainted foam. It's okay. I don't expect much from that. I love the wood prop. I love the way it landed. I mean, that was one of the most easy landings I've had in a long time. Would I expect that a beginner would want to fly a plane like this? You might want to, but I wouldn't suggest flying in the acrobatic mode or the aerobatic mode. I would just fly in the regular sport mode and get used to it, but there is no auto leveling, okay? Mm -hmm. The flight controller is solid and it definitely works, but I gotta say, if you're wanting something that's easier to fly, I would maybe order this without the Aura and just put in an AS3X receiver if you really wanna make it easy. Now, I know there's gonna be some people that disagree with me on that, namely the people that sell these things, um, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, we're here to serve you guys in the audience and not the manufacturers that we work with. In fact, we don't technically work with these guys, but we do have a link. So you will support us if you buy from the links and we appreciate you doing that. Um, we have tried numerous times to reach out and we haven't heard anything from these guys back. We don't know why. Uh, not sure if they're just like maybe understaffed or what the deal is, but we would love to work with uh, Flex Innovations and we have no problem with them. We think they make a good product. We've always said that. We've always thought it'd be looking nice. They've got a, a couple of really sweet looking planes that are out right now we'd love to review. But the thing is this thing has <clears throat> all the marks of a high quality plane, an everyday flyer, for those of you that have even basic flight control skills, okay? You don't need to be an expert to fly this, that's for sure, I'm not an expert. Um, but at the same time, some of you guys probably say that I'm an expert in your head, especially you new pilots, because you don't realize there's a lot better pilots yet, you will eventually. Uh, so we try not to pull any punches here on Brian Phillips RC. We wanna help sell aircraft for these small companies and big companies alike because that does help us earn money. But the thing is, at the end of the day, we want you to buy the right plane at the right time, for the right price, at the right season, for the right reasons. And all those things are, you know, really your decision and not ours. We just want you to know it's a good quality plane. And honestly, there was a couple of steps that annoyed us in the build and it was mostly like picking out screws. Mm -hmm. To be frank, we've had that problem with almost every manufacturer. So. Once you get past that, the thing is amazing. And then you don't have to get it with the night lights. We got it with the night lights, so it's gonna be so cool to show this thing at night. Trouble is, it's really hard to get a good film at night. So like, we'll probably end up having a clip where there'll be a flight at night, but it's just, you'll find that the exposure's terrible. Yeah. It's really hard to see stuff because you can't film uh, what's happening. There's all you see is the plane doing maneuvers in time and space. Now, also with a blue sky like this, we intentionally try to film when it's calm for fairness for the plane. So you have a good comparison from plane to plane. It doesn't always work out that way. And we also try to film with cloud cover if we can, because it gives us a good backdrop, helps Megan, the camera crew, my wife of many years, to keep things in focus. And then I also try to fly low. So we have a tree line and a backdrop that gives you guys color contrast. So you can see these planes. These are three things that we do that are inside baseball. You don't necessarily need to know that, but you'll know it from watching. Um, this plane, allows us to do all those things really good, except for make clouds and calm. We have had a heck of a time getting calm because it's been spring in Iowa, which is typical. And uh, in the next few weeks, we're gonna be wrapped by a green bush called trees, and we love it that way. And it's gonna be amazing, it'll help us film, but during these calm days where the sky is totally blue, a, a plane like this just doesn't always film as good. So we feel bad because we think the plane is sweet. Also, the plane has more to give too. So make no mistake, we're totally stock configuration right now. And you guys might look at this plane and think, you know, I, I expect more of it. Well, if you do, you have pretty high expectations to be honest, uh, especially at this price point. And I think the quality is good. I think it's, it's well-designed. It's easy to adjust the CG by moving the battery around. Uh, like I said, my only complaints are the canopy is a little bit thin, but you know, I'll get over that. I really don't care that much because I don't FPV out of the canopy. Um, secondly, 
I, I think the foam maybe like has that little bit cheap look, but that's also a function of doing good in the night flight arena because you can make the whole thing glow and it does glow. It's pretty cool. So, and you saw it there. If it weren't for your host having some uh, mental flaws, we would have been able to see it earlier in the video. So we all learned something though from my mistake. And that's one of the things we try to do here on Brian Phillips RC is not make a bunch of excuses for what we did wrong. We just say, hey, look, we made a mistake. See, this is what happens when you make that mistake. Um, and we have uh, matured into that a little bit over time, but we try to get better at making mistakes for you on Brian Phillips <laughs> RC. So we hope you appreciate that. <laughs> anyway, so this, this plane, the R8 is really cool. I think it's a great flight controller. I don't think it's gonna be quite as good for people that are brand new out of box RC pilots. If you're just a stock RC pilot that's just learning, then what you need to do is probably just plop an AR630 in here and be done with it, set up the AR630 like we do on any other 3D plane. I'm sure we've set up a, a 300 that, that looks just, except that would've been a bind and fly. I'm trying to think of a good, oh, what about the, nah, that had a vector in it. I was just trying the to edge, think the, X, the edge, yeah, which the Edge 540 is just the same thing, yeah, except that an did have vector. Arrows product made by FMS still. <laughs> so guys, that's the other reason why you're here with us is because we wanna to try to help you understand the RC ecosystem, and there's a lot of different companies that make a lot of different good stuff, okay? We don't have an opportunity to review it all. We wish we could. Some of these companies don't have the budgets to do marketing this way. Some of the companies don't wanna do marketing this way because they don't wanna be exposed for the garbage they're selling, okay? I don't think Flex is doing that. I think they're just small, and they can't afford to send out planes for reviews, and that's one of our principal methods for doing it because I can't afford to buy 400 planes. Um, at the end, of, I would I would afford to do it. It's just that I can't afford to do it. We'd like to eat. We'd like to stuff. eat food too, and we have four kids. <laughs> so anyway, if you guys want to help support us, that being said, buy these planes from the links. You will be supporting us. We aren't technically partnered up with Flex. We'd like to be. We are partnered up with Horizon. We are partnered up with a bunch of other companies. And so when we work with these companies, then the commissions that get paid when you buy doesn't cost you any extra. We just get small commissions as a thank you for helping to bring to market a plane that you might not have known about, or maybe we help you close the deal on it because you said, hey, I like the way it flied. I like the things you saw. I feel like the bad things you brought out are reasonable and I can live with them. That's what we do here. We're not trying to bash any company we work with except for Dynam, <clears throat> only because they just refuse to fix anything ever. And they're such an easy target. But at the same time, if you love Dynam, it's okay. okay. We can still be friends. <laughs> <laughs> because Tynum does make a couple of good planes. So that being said, guys, we appreciate you being here and part of this RC family. The RV8 is really cool. This happens to be the 10E, and I believe they call this like the red color. Or no, it's orange. 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 It is orange. So you'll There's see that other you'll see that in the unbox build radio setup, which is a separate video, and it should have published one minute before this video. That's why we do it in our long format here on Brian Phillips RC. So if you're used to shorts and you want something that you can watch quickly on the toilet, thousands of short videos that total to three or four hours if you're uh, trying to hide from your family in the bathroom, then why not just watch one Brian Phillips RC video? Yeah. Or half. Depends on the video. Also, if you like this video and you wanna see more, don't forget to subscribe. There's so much stuff. Click the bell for notifications so you know when new content comes out, which is usually about two to three or four times a week depending on what we're doing in a given week and depending on mother nature, if she has smacked us down to the ground or not, which she has been smacking us pretty hard lately. Mm -hmm. So that means the camera crew and I have to dig ourselves out of bed early. It's mm -hmm. terrible, but we do it for you. So thanks for watching guys. We love doing this stuff. We hope you'll keep coming back and we know we have the world's best audience on YouTube. Super loyal, super huge. And I know huge and loyal to you. Also, also, don't forget to check out BrianPhillipsRC.com. That's Megan's little labor of love. And you will be able to find things that you can't find easily on YouTube. But if you're wondering how to find something and you can't find it, the best way to search is by playlist on YouTube or Brian Phillips RC by manufacturer. We hope to get a portal set up so you can search by type, which is really helpful because then you can go in and find types that are from different brands. Sorry, brands. That being said, if you have questions about whether or not we have a reliable, high quality, easy to build, beautiful, huge plane, then you can check in those files and see. Or you can just go and click on my face, wherever that little round face is, except it's about like 10 years younger. Click on it 
and then go to the little search bar and you'll be searching just our channel. Mm -hmm. And you can do that anytime you want and you can find pretty much what you want or you can go and scroll through the playlist. But I'm telling you, there's hundreds of playlists and literally thousands of videos. So you're probably not gonna find them by scrolling unless you're looking for something recent. And if that's the case, congratulations because I have trouble finding stuff that way. <laughs> Anything you wanna add, Camera Crew? That covers it pretty much. All right, so the RV8, I'm gonna give it two thumbs up but we don't use a scale of thumbs up. So sometimes there's three, sometimes there's four, sometimes there's none. Sometimes we give negative thumbs up. Actually, I, I just started that right now. So we're not gonna do that. Scratch the thumbs up. It's a good plane. I think you're gonna like it. It's not the best. It's not the cheapest. It's not the fastest. It's not the whitest. It's not the blackest. It's not the orangest. It's not the best anything, but it's pretty dang good. And the thing is, we say that a lot about planes, not just this one, because we don't have these gimmicks where fastest, cheapest, you know, lowest wing, whatever. All these planes have different characteristics you might want, and we're gonna help you prove it out before you spend your hard-earned dollars to buy these from the links in the video description below. When you do it, you'll help support us. And by the way, we did use a satellite receiver like me, Megan mentioned, and we will link to that as well as the NX-10 has been great. We've had almost no problems with it. The only problems we've had with it are sometimes when we use Starlink to connect to Wi-Fi, and secondly, um, because Starlink, not because of the NX-8, which we did start using T-Mobile. We'll tell you more about it later. And we're experiencing some good things. Yes. And we're gonna aggregate them. Special thanks to Jay Christensen. Christina. Christina. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Jay, whatever your name is. Jay stands for something. Anyway, we appreciate you. We watch your videos and they are very helpful to us in the country because we use Starlink and we depend on crappy satellite internet. And when I say crappy, if you're in Ukraine, it's so much better than the other options. <laughs> so thanks for watching guys. We appreciate you being here with us. <laughs> if we offended everybody yet. <laughs> pretty cool, that was pretty close. <laughs> okay. All right guys, come back for more and check out more of this. Don't forget to buy these when you leave. See ya. YouTube, it's Brad Phillips. Look who we've got here. It's a night flight. That's right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna fly this RV8 from Flex Innovations with the Aura 8 flight controller. If you guys haven't seen this yet, we also have a day flight, and this thing looks totally cool. It actually runs on a separate 3S pack, but this thing flies on 6S in our case, 1300 milliamps, 100C pack from RC Hackers. And without further ado, we're gonna take off, just showing you real quick, normal takeoff flaps. And then if we go into the acrobatic mode, there's all sorts of full length action going on. And it's just really cool. It's all handled by the flight controller up to and including the deployment of the flaps. You have to do virtually no setup. It is so easy. Anyway, all right, in regular takeoff mode, takeoff flaps and beautiful sunset flight. By the way, the lights are switchable if you have a spare channel, but we used a satellite receiver to run this and it worked out really good. They had instructions right in the manual. Stay tuned for the unboxing. If you haven't watched it, it should have published one minute ago. <laughs> Beautiful. Get out of the flaps. That's 40% throttle. You do, have to, you do have to really coordinate your turns on this to make it look right. Light breeze tonight. Let's slow it down here just to show you how nice. Look at that. Perfect mixing for the elevator. Oh, that looks so sweet up against the green trees. Right overhead, you good? Mm -hmm. There it is, guys. Okay, out of the out of the landing flaps, out of the takeoff. That is so sweet. <laughs> you guys can see the nav lights too, janking it. Now this is in normal mode. Now watch this. I'm gonna go into acro mode here. Okay. So I'm in full acro mode here, just kind of cruising around. And then, whoops. <laughs> Just wanted to do a U-turn. <laughs> I mean, sticks out to the corners. It'll just do whatever you want and it'll do it right now, which is really cool. Wow. Really good roll rate. And I wanna go up here and do the standard cornhole. Yeah, I would like to get a flat spin. Let's see if we can get a flat spin, an upside down flat spin, inverted flat spin. Oh, come on, you got it, you got it. And then let go of the sticks and there it is. So cool. And look at it up against the sunset. Absolutely gorgeous. Those LEDs are quite visible and yet they're not 
going to overwhelm the beautiful sunset. And what a nice little line you've got there. Must admit, having adjusted the elevator earlier today, I'm kind of feeling like I need to adjust the elevator again. Hope my battery didn't shift, but if it did, that's okay. Because honestly, this thing, look at this, 50% on a hover. Oh, there it is. And if it starts slipping off on you, just correct. That is so crazy. It's like flying a helicopter. <laughs> okay, going out of the acro mode. And let's do some takeoff laps. Let's do just a general aviation. Let's do a little stroll, camera crew. Let's do a stroll. Mm -hmm. Down. Oh, here comes the, uh, is that their planner that's coming out of the field? Yep, it is. Let's give them a little show here. This is our neighbor. Just went up there and planted his fields. Let's go ahead and let's give him a wave. <laughs> sure he wants to see. All of our neighbors love the airplanes, in case it were any question. Now you'll notice the occasional flash and flicker, and I think that's just from using a floating full landing flaps. I think that's just from leaving the port opened. And so you end up with a little bit of ambiguity as to what the setting is gonna be at any given time. But I must say, if you plug that into a channel, you should be able to control it. I had thought about mixing it into the ailerons or maybe even into the throttle, that'd be cool. It does not dim or anything, it's just on or off. But also if that goes off, full disclosure, you're not gonna lose sight of your plane because the nav lights stay on. They are run from the regular power supply. Okay, cam crew, let's go over to the bull now. Nice and slow, you're good. Just doing some figure eights upside down. Folks, I gotta admit, that's our timer for four minutes, but I guarantee you we're gonna get closer to eight, nine, almost 10 minutes. Look at this, slowing down, just seeing what we can do with this thing upside down. You know what, let's just for grins, let's put on some spoilers. When you're upside down, flaps are spoilers. Okay, it didn't like that. <laughs> Started really losing altitude. Let's do a uh, high-speed pass here. And then up. See, out of the acro mode, it's really tame compared to the acro mode. So normally I don't really care for different modes, but this plane is so janky and acro on the elevator axis. About four steps forward for me, please. Thank you, perfect right there. And let's see if we can get a little trim going. I think the Aura likes trims to be managed inside of either mechanical trim or in the flight controller, but I'm gonna try a little bit of elevator trim here. See how it's diving a little bit when I, there we go. Okay, a little bit, a little bit too much. There we go. And a little bit of roll. Let's see if we can get rid of that. Normally we do uh, adjustments like that at the beginning of the flight, but not on Brian Phillips. Sorry, see we wait until it's too late. <laughs> Full speed pass. Not exactly what you're gonna be doing with this plane in general terms. Okay, into 3D mode. I wanna bring it over into the bowl and just do some hovering. See if we can bring it kind of close. Oh, we do have a voltage alarm. So usually about the time you have a voltage alarm would be a great time not to hover. So let's do it anyway. Okay. By the way, this is RC Hackers 100C success. Yeah, probably not a good idea. I think we're gonna lose it otherwise. I'm gonna just get her to the ground. So we'll go over here. Oh yeah, she's losing juice. Okay, so into regular flight mode, take off flaps, landing flaps. We may have to fly one more because I, I don't want to be done. Okay. Just bring it down here, nice and gentle like. Guys, it makes you look like a pro. And not super sticky tires, but look at that. Right at our feet, no problems. What a sweet plane. Really fun, throttle cuts on. Cool. I am super excited for the way this plane flew. I gotta say, there's definitely some issues with putting the hardware in, that was about the biggest issue we had. Mm -hmm. Let's shut this thing off, it's driving me nuts. We have that set to like 3.8 3 because we're flying it on EDF jets and I broke my button off, which sounds ridiculous. Hundreds of planes, evidently I only have one of these one things, of so I need to order some more. <laughs> but guys, look where I've got my battery. This is the battery, it's dinky. 
I fail to believe that you couldn't put a bigger 6S in there. Right. And honestly, you could fly it on less. Do you happen to have a battery in your pocket? I do. Oh, yeah. So let's go ahead and take this out. By the way, equipped with EC3, um, but I happen to have this running on XT60. And so I'll have an adapter there for the other battery. So camera crew, if you want to just show the people. Mm -hmm. We did abuse that pack something fierce on its maiden voyage. I'm going to give you that adapter. Mm -hmm. And where that was used was, do you remember? The P51 Voodoo. Vi yep, it was the Voodoo 1.1 meter. Okay. All right, so we're starting from 25.1, so about 4.19, 4.2, somewhere in there. Okay, guys, you see where the little 3S battery plugs in? In this little device here. Okay, now I'm going to try going back just a hair on my strap so I can get that battery back. My shelf liner is still going to be at the front, but we can actually get a little bit of capture there and it should be enough. I Ooh, broke that. Ooh. I hate it when that happens. If you do break one and you're like just dying to fly, yeah, that's where shelf liner really can save your butt. So folks, we don't generally do two flights in a row like this but I really wanna fly, and now that the sun is set, we want you to see what it could look like if it was dark. Now, bear in mind, it's not dark. It's twilight. Twilight is better for filming, but not as good to showcase how amazing this looks on the ground and in some sort of a demo. So I just want you guys to understand, oh, by the way, I'm gonna reset that timer right now because really that timer needs to be like six and a half, seven minutes. Okay, so. Maybe six. Six? Because you were only about six and a half and you were dead that time. Okay, so let's just do six then. Yeah. Okay, so to be clear, Flex Innovations, buy it from the links. You'll be supporting Brian Phillips RC, but we do not currently have a relationship with them. Yes, I know that sounds weird, but Flex, if you're listening, check your spam filter for my emails. Okay, here goes nothing, guys. Throttle cuts off. <laughs> Gonna do a little taxi here. In fact, we'll start from 3D craziness with full flaps. All right, throttle cuts off. Timer's cleared, here we go. Okay, out of the flaps. Let's do a little loiter here. I wanna try to get some slow, slow, slow flight. I'd like this thing to slow down even more. It is definitely gonna tip over on you if you're not careful. But as you can see, way up there, it's not, it's not really that scary. But if it tips over on you, you really have to be Johnny on the spot. And to be honest with you, I am no 3D pilot. I wonder if we could just do like takeoff flaps to help. And I am being kind of a pansy with my power. I'm at about like 40 to 50%. The flight controller does fight you a little bit on those quick snap rolls like that. It's just like, you don't want that, Brian. And I'm like, well, I kind of do. <laughs> so I wonder how crazy it would be if I flipped out of the stabilizer altogether and then tried it. Oh, you know what? They changed the amount of throws and everything. So it's actually less intense. Even though the stabilizer is off and we could snap it, you're not gonna snap as much right now just because of the nature of the stabilizer being off. And look at that, guys. Not too bad, not too shabby for an, you know, a non-skilled, non-stabilized pilot. Okay, so let's see how this goes. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to crazy 3D mode. So one thing that this plane lacks that some of the competitive brands have would be a reverse thrust option by default. Now that doesn't mean that you can't add that, but I'm not 100% sure you would wanna necessarily do that. I do think the serial communication for smart receivers should let you do it if you want to. Now the reason that's critical is because we're using a spectrum receiver, it just happens to be a satellite receiver. So I guess I don't even know how many channels are on the thing. I checked the manual all over the place. I assumed it was six, but I could be mistaken. And you'll notice that my lights are shut off. That is definitely not the battery because it just doesn't draw that much power. Okay, seeing it's flickering on and off. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful sunset though. 
So folks, if you're looking for a fun 3D plane that'll also do sport flying with the best of them, here's sport mode, just regular sport flying. And let's just show you a couple, couple passes. Let's do an inside pass about four steps forward mm -hmm. for me. Just absolutely gorgeous, folks. Let's get some tight passes here if we can get that around. And we'll just bring this right here, guys. Let's go, uh, let's go distract the guy with the uh, giant machine here again. Oh yeah, he honked at he us. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, just to be clear, our neighbors love the planes. We don't have very many of them. Neighbors. Neighbors. We have a lot of planes though. <laughs> But if you have neighbors that don't like planes, get new neighbors, seriously. That's all I got to say. Because who wouldn't love seeing something like this? It is just so sweet. And that's with full landing flaps in normal sport mode. And you can see we found the stall point where the nose drops. And even with full flaps, you can really cup, I mean, you can get that thing on a pretty nice knife edge. You do have to kind of ride stuff. Okay, out of the knife edge, out of the flaps. So if you want something that's sort of a 3D flyer that'll do fun stuff for you too, look no further than the Flex Innovations RV8. Yes, no formal relationship with them right now, but I gotta say, it'd be cool to work with these guys. They've got a couple of really nice planes. Oh, and by the way, if we didn't mention it already, thanks Rob for sending it. Mm -hmm. Yes, Rob sent us this plane because he's like, I want you guys to review it and I don't care. I'm just sending you one. And I'm like, oh, Okay, that's weird. So thank you, Rob. That was amazing and really unexpected. But guys, that's just how awesome an audience we have here at Brian Phillips RC is that we have people that are willing to literally send the man with hundreds of planes a plane because they want to see us do it. Okay, here comes another distract, distractee. I don't believe you would do that. The AMA would not like that very much, man. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're probably right. <laughs> so folks, if you ever get a chance to fly a flex plane, the Aura 8 is a really pretty solid flight controller. Is it as good or better than AS3X? I would say in terms of stabilization, it's probably a little better. It's also quite a bit more expensive, I believe. And to be honest with you, I love the fact that you can do all the crazy mixing for all the different full length flaps. Uh, full length flaps with flaps, with, or not full length flaps. What am I trying to say? Full length ailerons with an inboard separation for flaps. Mm -hmm. That is cool. And by the way, I have always been really happy ever since they switched over to forward programming, we've had really good luck with just about everything on the spectrum side for setting up AS3X and safe. It is just so easy, but I gotta say, this was way easy. Yeah. I mean, way easy, guys. And we, you don't see me flying upside down like this a lot. This flight controller really has it locked in. It's about 10% yeah. reverse elevator there. And just doing some coordination on the turns to keep it nice and crispy and clean. And folks, I love flying for you. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. It's one of my favorite things in the whole world. Thanks. I said one of. <laughs> I was gonna say something nice, but you interrupted me. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna save it. I'll say, other than my kids. Okay. And my wonderful wife, who's also in my camera crew. Boom! Just kidding, guys. I know some of you want me to crash into the house. I've only, I haven't done that for a while. It's been a while. Oh, by the way, I have noticed the lights are sorta of not on. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it is getting low. I don't know. So folks, let's, let's shoot some touch and goes before we lose our time. If you're curious about where to get this plane, just do me a huge favor, check the link in the video description below. When you buy it from that link, you'll be supporting Brian Phillips RC and his gigantic family. And after that last comment, I'm probably gonna need some support. Trust me, <laughs> I'm in trouble, I can tell. So folks, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what we do here, I fly airplanes, I tell you if they're any good, or at least my opinion, and then we kind of point out what we see the plane has to offer and what the plane doesn't have to offer. And then we let you guys kind of make up your own mind because if you want, you can buy them. Also, we have a website called Brian Phillips RC. It's so strange because it's not, oh wait, it's exactly the same it's name really as our channel. really creative. So if you guys are trying to find, oh, is that a bat? Let's go see the bat. Mm, no, a that's a bird. Barn swallow or something. Yeah, it's a barn swallow. Barn swallows are annoying. They are. 
Let's go over here and see how it lights up. Yeah, we must be killing our 3S battery must yeah. be about dead. Do a little reverse slip here, knife edge. See if we can slow it way down. Whoop, see that's the only thing I don't like about that. I wish that that stall was a little bit less aggressive on full landing flaps. It really likes to push the nose over down because I want to slow it down better. Oh, there's our warning. Okay. So folks, thanks so much for being the world's best audience on YouTube. Here on Brian Phillips RC. If you're new to the channel and you want to help support us, we also have Patreon and PayPal. It's down below the link to the plane, receiver used, transmitter, and battery. In this case, the battery is an RC Hackers 100C, believe it or not, 6S, 1300 milliamp hour. And yes, this is super annoying, so I'm gonna immediately unplug it. Yeah, 3.6 volts. So about where we were at before. Mm -hmm but we did go about two minutes and 40 past our six. And yep. yeah, so that's about eight and a half minutes. Now, admittedly, if I had a better battery, meaning that these batteries were literally almost caught on fire on the first flight, we were doing it to try to catch them on fire. And they didn't. <laughs> so we were like, you gotta be kidding me. They came out round. That's not a good thing to do. It's bad, but it was pretty cool. So. If you guys decide to do that, do it in a safe environment. Um, obviously, we do a lot of fun stuff here on Brian Phillips RC. Um, we don't want you to think that we take safety light. We, we don't. We just aren't nannies. We know that you guys are adults. We know from the analytics that you're adults. We do. So if you're an adult and you're like, hey, you know, I want to start flying and I've got this excuse or that or whatever. I'm too old, too blind too lazy, well, you know, stop doing those things and start flying. And you're like, how do you stop being blind? <laughs> how do you stop being lazy? That part you control. But blindness, I got LASIK. What's your excuse? Get some glasses, okay? Get out and fly. You need to do it because the thing is you're missing out. This is an amazing experience. It's an amazing skill. It's not daunting, but it is difficult. And especially if you have all the technology that's available today that wasn't available just like 20 years ago, you would not believe how much easier it is to fly. Now, that doesn't mean that you're just gonna pick up the sticks and go to town. It does mean that you'll be able to do it with less time and less exposure to crashing and stuff like that, okay? so. If you remember back in the day when we used to build planes out of balsa wood like this, okay? You'd spend three, four, five, six weeks, a couple months sometimes on a plane, and then you'd put all that stuff together and you'd have all that fun and then you'd go to the flying field and you'd be like, I'm having a heart attack, this is scary. Remember that feeling? And then you would crash and confirm the heart attack feelings and then you quit. You are one of millions of people that did that. Millions. <laughs> The camera, the camera crew is, is doubting my millions. <laughs> One of tens of millions of people who did that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull yourself up by your bootstraps. I don't know how you do that. It's like this. It's kind of awkward. Um, and you're gonna go order some foam plane. And I know, just relax, it's foam, I know. It's not as good as wood. But here's the thing. You can still get wood planes, you can still buy kits, and you can still do it today from links that we have in our video description. But I wouldn't suggest it as a beginner. This foam is forgiving. It's gonna give you more chances at success per dollar than if you were to get a balsa wood plane. Now, on the flip side of balsa wood plane, you can make near perfect after a crash, but you have to spend time and money to fix them. It's not free to do that stuff. So don't forget that when you say, well, how come that wing is $40? Well, it costs you $40 in supplies. I mean, look how much CA costs these days. Look how much balsa wood costs. I mean, there's supposedly a shortage like everything else. So all I'm gonna say is, if your excuse is you're afraid of crashing, stop using that excuse. No longer valid. You're gonna crash. You're gonna crash. Just plan on it and buy some glue. In fact, China makes some good glue and we will link to it down below. True. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. So if you get the China glue, you'll love it. It's gonna work and you're gonna say, Wow, Brian, China did something right. That's right. Well, they also made these things, generally speaking, a lot of it. 
Um, and you're like, well, I only buy American. Okay, fine. Then buy American stuff if you can find companies that are doing it. And if you know of them, please do let me know. There's one of them that's like not too far from where we live called SIG. And they're technically in business. So we would love to work with SIG if they would reply to our emails. I don't think they've upgraded to emails yet from... We should send them a letter. From That is a great idea. From facsimiles. So How I told old you, are you I'm old. <laughs> so guys, if you like this content and you're like, I'm so sick and tired of those shorts and people like opening and closing their retracts like a bunch of weirdos and dancing to strange beats oh, have to that you don't that, recognize. Do huh? We don't have to start doing that, do we? No. Oh, good. Oh, no, it would be bad. If you're tired of that and you want to see content where people fly planes in beautiful sunsets and make the planes light up like this, then you're at the right place, Brian Phillips RC. We're going to help take care of you. We're going to try to get you some information, get you off the chair and in the air. Well, at least your airplane will be. <laughs> Hopefully you're not. Although we do PPG and technically you bring your chair with you for we PPG. is incorrect. I sort of do it. We did bury the power lines. Yes. So that I don't kill myself on them. Yes. At least that thing. That part of We've got them. other deadly things, but not that deadly thing. That'd be kind of like a crispy ending. <laughs> so if you're wondering what else new is coming, there's so much. I can't even squeeze it into an extra. Is that how you say that? Extra? It's like instead of an intro, outro? it's like an exit. Outro. I don't know. Outro. Thank you. Outro. outro. Right. So RV8, final thoughts. Amazing. Pretty fun plane. I am not a 3D flyer, okay? You may have noticed that from every single time that I have done a 3D plane, I tell you. So if you don't think I'm a very good 3D pilot, uh, yes, like I said, I'm not. We hope that that's been made clear. If it's not clear, we're gonna clarify, I am not a good 3D pilot. It is not my forte. I love flying scale flights that look like a real one general aviation, warbirds, you know, EDF jets, all that stuff. I love them all. Helicopters. I'm not so much into quads. You probably have figured that out, but we do quads occasionally. So we also do ground vehicles and we do all sorts of other things like weed whackers, leaf blowers, tractors, I just balers. Use... We make hay literally on this channel. I just used that leaf blower tonight. It was awesome. It was awesome. It's still awesome. It's like <laughs> we use it like more Do than anything we've that. ever done reviews on. Well, that and the air chuck, and that was super handy. So if yeah. you guys, if you guys like the content and you enjoy watching my wife and I have a good time, uh, sometimes at the expense of glues, then smash the like button. We know you can do it. It's not that hard unless you're watching it on a TV. And then it's like sort of impossible. So get your phone out and smash the like button on the video that you're watching on the big TV. Yeah. Or if you're watching on the computer, that should also be easy. You just kind of hover over the thumbs up and you click it. Is that how you do it? Is it, it a is. thumbs up? Yeah. They're going to change it now. They probably now that will. I said that, it's not going to not going to age well. So, we also have some new content coming that we are going to be introducing in the next couple of weeks, hopefully, where we had one of our subscribers come up here from another state. I'm not going to mention too much more and we fly some of his balsa wood planes. Yes, finally balsa wood. We've been telling you for years, it's amazing, Brian. Guys, I know, it's just, you know, like foam is what people buy these days. Um, we don't have vast time to build majority. them. That's right, well, this guy did. He does. And he builds them in like two or three weeks and they look impeccable. Yeah, So amazing. it's really cool. And you know, the craziest part is he let me fly them. Yes. He brought them to me to crash. Yes. I mean, fly. You only did that once though. Did I? I don't know, you have to wait and see. Oh. So. If you guys want to see that, stay tuned. And we really do appreciate your patronage over the years. It's almost been a decade. We've been doing this for so long. We don't remember life before this amazing experience. We also almost need another house now to hold all the airplanes, which is an amazing problem. It's a huge problem to have, but we're trying to resolve that right now. And also we're working on getting a pond. Our next big capital project is a pond. It's going to be expensive. But it's going to be amazing. And I know amazing. Right? Because you're married to me. I know amazing. Yeah. And I'm married <laughs> to you, obviously. So we buried the lines last year. This year, we're going to be putting in a pond. We want to do some 
floats and we want to do some boots and it's going to be fun. So we hope you'll be along for the ride. And also, if you want to meet us in person, we are cautiously optimistic that we're going to be making it to This might something. be after that, so maybe we so should say that. So if you met us already, congratulations. It was wonderful to meet you. And I told my wife, she said, well, you'll have to keep your conversations to five minutes. And I'm like, that's never happened in my life. No. We'll have to practice. I'll bring a stopwatch. <laughs> so Time's if up. you meet me... And you're like, wow, you weren't kidding. <laughs> You'll understand. This is not an act. This is not an act. This is every day. <laughs> so, um, by the way, if you get the China glue, they don't warn you. Don't sniff the fumes. I learned the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I didn't. Have that much. Learned the hard way. So, at the end of the day, RV8 is amazing. Flex Innovations. Why would you not want to partner up? with such a clean, straight-laced, to-the-point guy like Brian Phillips RC and his wonderful camera crew, who is the best in the industry, Megan. Yes, that's right, she has a name. But I'm not gonna tell you her last name, except I'm married to her. <laughs> there you go, that's all you get. Thanks for watching, guys, come back for more. Oh, one more thing. If you haven't seen the Unbox Build radio setup and you wanna see how we did this, it was relatively easy build i was super annoyed with the bolts because i couldn't figure out which one went where and we just did process of elimination but beyond that it actually went together pretty easy it did. the radio setup was amazing but we kept losing camera power so my apologies in advance there's gonna be like clip 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 clip, clip at the end but we didn't cut out anything other than lots of swearing and throwing things we try to do that off camera we have read a lot of instructions on things that were supposed to work really simply and they're horrible. Yeah, but this and one this did. And this was like, it just worked. It worked. Just like so, it said. So if you if you want to see what it took to get it set up, it was actually super duper easy. We did use a slightly different receiver, so be aware of that. And uh, you can use an, an ordinary receiver as well, but it does have to have a serial port out the way this thing is set up. Uh, well, just watch the video, you'll understand. But just to be clear, the Aura 8 is a flight controller. And so you have to seed data to it in a serial manner. So just, you'll understand. And you can use S-Bus, you can use Futaba, you can use all, pretty much all the major brands. I think they even had JR, they had Spectrum, of course, a couple of Spectrums. And then they also had what Rami uses. What's Rami use? Mm, I'm drawing a blank. Grapner? Oh yeah, they did. Yeah, so I mean, they have like all that stuff filled, yep, it was all filled in, in which is really helpful and it's on like two pages or maybe two and a half pages i can't remember yeah. so just whatever you need i mean it's like minutes of setup we had to kick our throws up to 125 percent on the main primary axis of controls and it just went super smooth so if you haven't already watched it that comes in a different video but it should already be published if you're watching this at this point of the video then that means it's already published because it publishes one minute before our main release which by the way we try to keep bringing you tons of footage huge amounts of footage and how many videos have we done this year oh we're averaging 12 a month. 12 a month? Yeah. Okay. Like so we're up to like 50 something? Yeah, I think it's 53 so far. So 53 videos in 2023. And, and we got to be getting close to like 1,800 videos or oh, 18 and a half. We got to be close to 2,000. 2,000 yeah. videos? Oh, goodness gracious. So if you're, sure, if you're serving a short jail sentence, just start watching. And then when you go, when you go back, you can finish the rest yeah. or even watch it on the outside. You know, if you're not a captive audience, it is kind of harder, you know, to keep your attention. But if you want to support us, click the bell for notifications after you subscribe, click all and you'll get notified of new content just like this. And then don't forget to buy these things from the links. That is really the best way to help us. But if you just refuse to follow the links because you're like, I don't want the man to know that you sent me there to him to buy the thing. Okay, fine. That's fine. We have Patreon and PayPal if you want to throw us a few bucks. As a special thank you, just remember, we're friends and family as far as we're concerned. Otherwise, you're giving like up to 20% of your money to PayPal and not us. So that's kind of dumb if you ask me. And also, Patreon is pretty expensive too, but the thing is, it's nice. It does give you a little bit easier access to reaching us, but it is not a defined benefit. So we do that for a reason because overseas you would have to pay that value added tax for you Americans. We're not but adding any value. We're not adding any you. value at all. Nope. We're actually subtracting yes. value. 
We so, should be paying you. That's right. Yeah, that's right. We should really be paying you. No, so, Patreon should be oh, paying sorry, you. Oh, sorry. I said that backwards. I knew I was going to screw something up tonight. So if you guys want to help support us in that way, the links are just down below, a little bit further below the plane. But since this one has four items, we'll have the plane, battery used, uh, transmitter, receiver, mm -hmm. and then just down below, we have our normal stuff. Yep. So we really appreciate you and hope we got to meet you at the thing at the special place that I can't mention now because it's super secret. Stay tuned. So much more from Brian Phillips RC.